Welcome to Reptilian Diaries. I'm Frank. We do reptiles here. Today, we're doing a closer look episode on Oedura fimbria, the western velvet gecko. Western velvet gecko, Oedura fimbria, Odura fimbria, Oedura, doesn't matter, same thing. Western velvet gecko, big, beautiful, bad boy. Now, these guys got broken up. 2016 saw the first uh, taxonomic revision of this species. It was Oedura marmorata. Oedura marmorata got split up into marmorata, cincta, bella, and fimbria, right? So you've got Fimbria in the west, uh, which is in the Pilbara area. You've got Cincta in the east, New South Wales, um, central kind of southern Queensland area. In the north, up in the top end of the Northern Territory, you've got Oedura marmorata, the typical marmorata form. And then along the Gulf of Carpinteria, a little bit southeast of marmorata, you've got Oedura bella. So those were the four original. And now recently down in the center in Southern Northern Territory has been described Oedura laricha, which is also part of the Marmorata complex. So that's the breakdown for those who care. If you're not into that stuff, sorry, just wanted to explain it, but uh, that's how taxonomy works um, in a nutshell. Generally, you'll see a species like Marmorata and the range is massive. It goes from Western Australia all the way to the East Coast and there's variations between the populations and herpetologists see this and so they start studying the different populations and soon enough through genetic stuff and uh, and morphological stuff they find out that hey we don't have one species we've got four or five or six or ten or whatever so that's what happened dope natural habitat for these guys rocky canyons rocky outcrops gotta have rocks Australian desert, there's not tons of rocks generally, so when you do find a rocky outcropping in the west, the northwest, you're going to find these guys. Just about every rocky outcropping that we visited, once we were in their range, we found them. We found them as far south as uh, Kew area, and we found them all the way up north of Karajini National Park, and west to, I don't even remember where, Wim Creek or something like that. So... Let's go back to Western Australia and see a little bit of the habitat, see some animals in the habitat, because that's what it's all about. <sighs> Man, these flies are crazy. Ah, so this is Oedura fimbria habitat, and this is the crap that we deal with to find these things. I mean, these flies are just absolutely insane. Absolutely crazy. But wow, this is just beautiful habitat. Why we love him. Oh, oh. Here's the habitat. Activity is simple. 20 gallon long, that's what I use. I think it's a Zilla, opens from the front. Super simple, 
sand substrate. I provide a back wall. I'll generally make it out of styrofoam. I'll cut pieces. You can use a hot wire and really get crazy with it. I generally don't go that, go that uh, nuts, but I'll take a piece of uh, styrofoam, glue a couple other pieces of styrofoam, cover the whole thing in grout a few times, hit it with Mod Podge or some other safe sealant, call it a day, slap it on the back of the cage, put some rocks, put some wood, be done with it. I will generally keep the animals together from early spring to mid fall, which is the entire breeding, laying, hatching season. And then I separate them during the cool down. That's the only time I separate them. I separate them for about two and a half months. And during that period, they're in separate cages. They're cooled down. They're more or less shut down. They barely eat. They'll drink. You really don't see them very often. And that's their, that's their winter cooled down. Warm them back up, you put them together. Now when I say cool down, generally it's low 50s in the night to 70 to 72 high in the daytime. Um, that's the cool down period. Summertime, they're in the mid 70s in the night. That's the low point. High point is about 90 or so. It's just kind of general daytime temperatures under the basking spot will be 90, 95 degrees, but that's directly under generally a 25 watt halogen puck light. The rest of the cage is in the low 80s. Spray them every day in the morning, just a little bit, don't douse the cage down. Get some moisture in there, have a small water dish. These guys, did li they do live in canyons. They do live in areas where there is humidity. I mean, they do live in a pretty dry desert area, but the microhabitat, they find niche areas where there is humidity. So you wanna provide that or you will not do well with these animals. Other than that, man, you put them together, you'll start seeing the females ovulate. Gestation's like, I don't know, a month or so. They drop those eggs. It's always two eggs. They drop the eggs. Those eggs will go from 70 to 80 days at about 84, anywhere up to even 88. They'll hatch. The babies are beautiful, black, yellow bands. They hatch out pretty big, and they're strong animals. Usually don't have any problems with these things. It's a pleasure to keep them. People want them. They're rare. So it's rewarding to be able to breed them and trade them or sell them or whatever you want to do, collect them, I don't know. Awesome lizards. That's it. I think it is. It is. Beautiful lizards. Oedura, Fimbria, the Western Velvet Gecko. Closer Look, Volume 3, Chapter 3. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>